This episode of Capes and Lunatics is brought to you by Tweaked Audio. To get awesome headphones, go to tweakedaudio.com and use the coupon code SOUTHGATE to get 30% off, free shipping, and a lifetime warranty. Or you can get there through the link on our website, southgatemediagroup.com. Hey, we really want to be it, because we hope our good times never end. It's Miles. It's Chaz. Hey, we really want to be your friend. Hey, friend. It is I, Charlie the Professor Esser, and with me, as always, is my skinny rich friend. It's Maz. Hey, Maz. So glad you're here <laughs> for quality. And tonight, we are once again in the final season of Jessica Jones, season three, episode six. A.K.A. Sorry Face, as the police shit sift through the gruesome crime scene, Jessica and Trish race to find Bellinger's latest captive, uh, Tim Iacofano uh, is their director this week. Brian Michael Bendis and Michael Gatos are got our Marvel created bys. Uh, Jesse Harris gets a written by. Uh, Jay Holtham and Jamie King are both story editing the crap out of this episode. Mm. And Melissa Rosenberg gets, of course, that created by credit. Uh, Jamie King, of course, friend of the show, hardest working man in the show. Okay. Oh, man, this episode. Oh. It's, it's a lot. It's a lot. This is a heavy, this is heavy stuff. And, man, oh, that guy, that, 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 what is it, Salinger. The fool. Mm. He's such a fool killer. Why is he still alive? Oh, mm. uh, of course, we open up. And, you know, you get this this sort of what we, I guess what we can say is essentially the 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 constant problem we're going to be facing with getting Salinger, which is that in order for jessica to protect other people she can't build the case Mm. you know and that is that is the thing because of course you know uh salinger gets away they you know she finds all the body parts that he led him led her led them to but um you know at the end of the day there's nothing that they can do because they say well what you're you say this guy was here and now he's gone Unless we can have a- actual evidence that ties him to this, right? It's nothing, and right? And he had this plan long ago. I mean, he was ready to walk away from any of these things completely clean. He was that careful. Well, and he was careful enough even to not just get rid of the album, but to replace the photos oh, in the yeah. album, and not just replace the photos, but replace the photos with good photos that were, you know, believable that a photographer would have in there. And, and uh, the detective says, because he's got a good eye. He's even, he's impressed. Yeah. So it's not like they're photos that wouldn't be cherished by somebody. They are photos that would be cherished by somebody. So mm-hmm. he went a long way to build a, a narrative around it that makes sense. Yeah. Well, he, he clearly prides himself on, you know, on being Batman, you know, always mm. having that plan, always thinking one step ahead. I don't know if he really does that, but he he does a lot of something. And um you know, it's it's interesting expressly because literally it is the fact that the only reason he gets to keep on going is because Jessica is choosing not to be the be the vigilante is choosing not to be the the person that she could be right and when he says you know somebody else's or the supers are cheating all he means is they're not allowing me to cheat well exactly i mean well i mean this is the thing about this guy he is kind of transparent at the end of the day Mm. you know he is kind of transparent that there is so much it's not even and you know what the, the joke of it is it's not even that he feels he would be you know, it's not it's not just Lex Luthorism, where hmm. you can argue that yeah, in a world without Superman, Lex Luthor would be Superman, essentially. Hmm. This guy just thinks anyone who's gotten ahead of him has to have cheated. 
Right. You know, when he talks about his brother, and it's like, well, you know, he just, you know, he had, he wasn't smart. He didn't have any of these things. He, you know, and, and just dismisses, dismisses anyone who might have achievement who isn't him. Right. You know, he's, uh, he's, he's a bad person. Right. Shocker. Shocker. (laughs) Is actually a very bad person. Um, as we saw at the end of last episode, he does he does capture Eric, and he takes him to a commercial kitchen, um, because you know, as he says, you know, normally I would do this in a private home sitting, but you don't have that kind of a place, you know, because uh, he's he's homeless. Well, he lives in a rented room, you know. That's not um, and you know, he is. And he's trying to figure out, you know, how did you know? And he gets all excited when he realizes, haha, my simple power of righteousness is hurting you. And it's like, no, your fact that you're an evil, evil piece of nothing is yeah. hurting me. That you are so painful to be around. Um, and I do like that because it does emphasize, as a part of this story, the limitation, you know, Basically, the old, you know, superpowers are a curse, you know? Mm. You think that these are great and wonderful and helpful, but you know what? Not for nothing, you know? Um, uh, Kilgrave would have had no interest in Jessica if she were not a superhero. Mm. You know? That that this puts you in situations that make life so much worse for you. Right. And the fact of the matter is, is that Jessica is a good enough detective that left her own devices, she probably would have caught far more people if she was not trying to protect other people. Right. Right. Because that's, that's the thing, even after they do. And the whole track and like, and that's one of the things I gotta say, this is, I love the gumshoe work. in this. Mm -hmm. You know, I love how much work, and effort they put in, and and also showcasing it. You know, one of the things a lot of people say, a lot of people talk about, is that when they read Batman books, they get upset because he never does any detective work. Right. You know, it's just he goes there and he beats up people, and, you know, he's, he's prepared and he's got all his gadgets and all these things, but it's like, you know, he's never just tracking something down that, you know, to see to see what we can find, you know, or to see how how to prove something. Batman never tries to prove anything, and you know, Jessica she right. does. Right, they've sort of relegated. Yeah, they've sort of relegated that part of his personality into going into creating the coolest gadgets to hurt people with, as opposed to creating techniques to discover hidden things. Yeah, exactly, and 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 that don't mean to be down in Batman. It's, it's a great book, a great. Story. Right, it's right. For, decades you can't really fault it um but i do love and for for that aspect of it i love any good detective story sure and this is a good detective story where they you know realize okay this guy cleaned all the body parts we can't we yeah we identified all all of the body parts all seven all seven people they belong to it's like well there are eight people that i know he he had victims of and Mm -hmm. You know, and the guy says, you know, why don't you give me your list? I'll give you my list. And he's like, you know, you know, and he's like, Jones, ah, da, 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 da. And I love it because he does that whole big walk up and then casually drops the list of names for her. Right. No, because, I mean, the other officer was there and he can't be seen as colluding with a vigilante. Yeah. But at the same time, he knows what the side of good is. Well, yeah. And not for nothing. It's everyone. It's, everyone saw that. That's what I'm going to say. Everyone saw that. And well, we saw it. I don't know if that 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 cop was there saying, yeah. "Hey, hey, you got to come take a look at this." She was ahead of him, so I don't know if she caught it. Yeah. Anyway, it's anything's possible. But I, I, I did love that scene. I love the way that it played out. And yeah, it is his his own CYA, you know, just to make sure that he is he is covered. But at the same time, I mean, like I said, I really I really like that aspect of it. And then they realize, okay, this is the one person that we can't identify. This is – who is this person? And then, of course, she has to um, – you know, and then 
you know, we get into Malcolm's story. And man, I, I love Malcolm's story in this whole thing. Because it is Malcolm yeah. just trying to decide what do I want to be. And you know what's great is that the short answer is not necessarily he wants to be a good person. It's just that he doesn't want to be helping evil. You know, it's like he's, he's you know, he is not a sweet summer child. He knows the world is a mess and he is not above dealing with the darkness of reality and even his own darkness when he goes beats up uh, the pimp, you know, gets his revenge for the pimp beating up him. And then, of course, what I love best about that scene, you know, um, you know, where, because of course that does, does that, I believe that happens after she comes to, after Jessica comes to Malcolm and says, you have facial recognition software, we need to find out who this guy is, they find out that, that guy is actually still alive, uh, which makes for a great story too, which we'll get to. And then he goes and he beats the heck out of the pimp and then leaves Barry behind. Basically says, there's a serial killer after you, come back to my place if you want to, you know, Come with me if you want to live. And they're like, you you left her there? And she said, look, if I if I try to force her to come back, she is not coming back. You know, she you know she will just leave again. If she comes here because she makes that choice, she'll stay. And I can- yeah, just like that scene in Stranger Things with Hopper letting Alexi walk and then having him get in the car and drive off and recognize he has nowhere to go, only that he can't come back. Yeah. I haven't finished watching uh, Stranger Things, so spoilers, Maz. Oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I know, I know how it ends. I just don't know anything that happens. Okay, well, it doesn't really mean much. It's a tiny little thing, but but no, for those who've seen it, it mirrors what we just saw here. Yeah. Yeah, and and that's and that's a good aspect of it. Um, they do, and again, again, to show how, just who Selinger really is, that he ties the guy up and. The other guy thinks, oh, this is sex play. Okay. This right. Is, this, is, this, is, this is kind of fun. This is interesting. What are we going to do next? What are we going to do next? And then all of these realize, you know, I think this guy might be a little serious. This guy might be a little out, out of it. And he does the only thing he can think of, which is he kisses Salinger. And it freaks Salinger out. Because that's that's a, a human trait that I don't think he's comfortable being human anymore. He's strayed so far from that line that he doesn't recognize it as oh, familiar anymore. I think I think it goes – I mean, here's what I'm going to say. You know, you, 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 of course, heard of the gay panic defense. And this is mm. a gay panic, but in the flight – version of it because right right the truth of the gayness is so that basically probably he is very much a person uncomfortable with his own self and sexuality you know he is uncomfortable he's un, he is just an uncomfortable person and when someone who is comfortable with themselves actually one ups him he doesn't know how to handle it. Right. Right. It's interesting to me in that because the whole time in my head, I just saw it being like that's what it was meant to be from the beginning. And he was going to pretend to be that and then kill him. But to Salinger, that might not have even occurred to him. He might have just been, you know, luring him with uh, the thought of placating his ego, saying, I want to take photos of you. And he might not have even seen the romantic angle of it. And he's like, wait a second. what? A, this is not what I had planned. This is not what I intended. And I am no longer in control of the narrative any longer. And I'm very uncomfortable by this. Well, yeah. I mean, very much I think that is a real part of it. I mean, one one thing to tell is like how the guy was – that the whole reason he's doing it to this guy is because – he, he says he overcooked the steak, you know. <laughs> now, look, I hate an overcooked steak as much as the next guy. I, mean, I really despise it. I will send that I will send that back if that is not a bloody rare steak. I will, you know, because I, I eat my steaks raw. I, that's who I am. And, I, I, you know, I do not like a meat. I think a medium, a medium rare, medium well steak or medium rare steak, even I think that's too much. It's like, but but at the same time, it's still a good steak, and I'm sure it was delicious. Uh, I think I think the offense was laid in the fact that it was a Michelin star chef giving him an overcooked steak. If it was just somebody or just another restaurant giving him an overcooked steak, it probably wouldn't have been as great an offense. Yeah, but you know, at least that's the the I think the justification from yeah well, from yeah. his perspective. And again, I still want to see – I want to see someone actually check up on any of those degrees, see if any of those are real. 
Mm. I, 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 I still say that those are all fake degrees. He printed them out on his computer just to look like a big, big, big important guy. Hey, maybe, maybe that contest back in the day that he actually won was picked at random. I would wager that that was actually true. In fact, I would wager that, you know, that, you know, that, because first we don't know anything about the contest. We don't know if it was a state fair. We don't know if this was some magazine contest where maybe everyone's a winner. You know, the old write your poem and we'll publish it in this anthology. Only the best poems will get published. You know, my, meanwhile, there's 5,000 poems in the anthology. Um, hey, but hey, you're a published author now, so you can take that. Uh, so you know what? Give and take. Uh, but at the same time, yeah, it is this fact that maybe he's never achieved anything. Maybe he was really good at some things, but maybe not the best. He's, you know, he's the, he's the, you know, it's the, he's the small time, he's the small time champion. And he can't accept the fact that being a big fish in a small pond is actually a nice place to be. And when he realizes there are bigger fishes, he can't handle it, you know? You know, it's like, you know, it, it, it's like the anti-L Bundy. You know, L Bundy, he, you know, he, he did, you know, what is it, five touchdowns in a single game? But, <laughs> um, at the same time, you know, he's happy about that because that was his real achievement. And he doesn't look at, and actually, I mean, something I think we're going to see later is the fact that even in those little achievements, he was not the best that it was. There were other guys. You know, he's better than, you know, he's better than some rando he picks off the street. Right. Because he gets the element of surprise, which I think 99% of it is always the element of surprise. If you have the element of surprise, you know, it's much easier to get the drop on somebody. Sure. Know? But, of course, telling in that is that he wasn't intending to stab Jessica at the start of this whole storyline. That was a shock to him, and he ran because he realized he stabbed the wrong person mm. and didn't even know who Jessica was. And then when it all starts to unravel, it's like, you know, he tries to spin himself in this narrative. Oh, this just means I'm even better than I ever imagined. It's like every defeat for him is just proof of how much better he was than he thought he was before that moment. Um, <laughs> yeah, it is. It, it is. A, it is a thing for him. <laughs> right. Strong delusions. Yeah. Well, I mean, but that's who this character is. We get that. uh Jessica finally comes clean to her mom. Not Jessica, I'm sorry. Uh, Patsy. Well, Jessica finally comes clean to Patsy's mom. <laughs> yes, exactly. And it does the, I, I love, just pushes her out the window, which, you know, I certainly hope she knew that was going to work. You know? Yeah. <laughs> but it does show that, yes, she does actually do have superpowers, you know. She does have the ability to fall from great distances like a cat and has, you know, Obviously, stronger tendons and and muscles and and bones to handle the force of falling like that. Uh, can get her feet under her, land knows how to land right, all those kinds of things. That is a superpower, you know. You don't want to do yeah. It I mean, it really story building, but off of a off of the third floor, that's that's not. Too yeah, it, it's interesting because it almost is the complementary power that Jessica is missing because she has super strength, but her body is still a human body and still has to deal with the trauma of applying those magnificent forces mm -hmm. onto a body that's not built to handle them. Now, maybe if she had uh, Patsy's powers, she would be the complete superhero. You know, she would be impervious to a lot of the the fallout from the force she applies on her body and on. on things well neither one of them is still bulletproof and actually I, right you know i think i think they I, I think actually jessica does have stronger bones and and tendons and things because we've seen her like smash things and bend things yeah and it's not like her skin flakes off when she does that you know you know so although weren't her knuckles bleeding when she was trying to break out of the container yeah yeah they were but she was also punching against solid steel and mm. denting it which also means that her bones are, are, are pretty. So basically, it it seems like, you know, I mean, I, I don't know, because it seems like her skin's pretty strong, too. It's just we know it's not bulletproof. Right, that's true. It's not bulletproof or knifeproof. Although, to be fair, very few things are, especially knifeproof. That's mm. something people always forget about bulletproof vests is that actually mm. knives can actually, if you get a hard enough knife, it'll just shatter the plate and go right through you. I wonder if an arrow probably would, too. Um, if it's from a compound bullet, actually, yes, it probably could. 
it, right. it's that close enough range. Because uh, the reason why bulletproof vests actually work is because the force behind the bullet actually causes the bullet to flatten rather than pierce. Um, and it's that's really just the whole difference is whether or not the bullet flattens or pierces. Um, hmm. But if you have a knife, because it is has a much longer length and is also designed to be, you know, um, essentially stronger. And it has a much smaller surface area to which the entirety of that force is applied. Exactly. And it's got the little wedged aspect of it. There's a lot of things that knife works, works out great for knives. Um, but, you know, bullets are also good, too. But And then, of course, you can have, you know, bullets that are, you know, if you have a ceramic bullet that is made of the same ceramic as the shield, that is going to, you know, give you, give you pause as well, you know. Mm. Uh, ceramics are crazy strong. But, of course, like they say, you know, what cuts a diamond, but another diamond. That was the moral of... Okay. Um, yeah. Um, there's there's a nice scene in this with uh, Jerry going to the funeral for the guy who killed himself and confronting the son who is... Who I actually have so much sympathy for. Cause he is, of course. He's a teenager. And it's clear that he knows what a piece of trash his father was now. Yeah. It's like, it's like, oh, my father was a hero and you tore him down. It's like, no, my father was a manipulative liar his whole life. And, you know, but I, but he was still my dad and now I don't have one. And I also know that, you know, you, you exposing him killed him in a way that makes me mad at you too, you know? Right, because like he has to confront the facade now, which had always existed. So even though mm-hmm. he gets to see the truth, but you know he was much happier with the facade. Well, yeah, but you know I think it's sort of the thing. Like if if the guy had just gotten caught by you know the university's exchequer or the or you know if the IRS had done an audit and found all this stuff, then it would have been a much easier to handle thing. Because right. as much as his father would still be a, a ranting, raving, you know, jerk, probably still kill himself and blame the government. I think I think the fact that it wasn't so that the government could sleep with his mom, the kid might have had a better better dealing with it. And yeah. and you see like the horror in the kid's face when he accidentally knocks Tyrion down and realizes this woman, you know, fell and hurt herself. He blames himself and it's just you know, it's a hard day, man. It's a hard day to be a teenager when your father commits suicide and blames blames your mom's lover for it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And then, of course, you know, the whole thing with the... Which, of course, is the other aspect of this story, which is that he's blaming, you know, blaming Jaren for, you know, inciting superhumans against us norm, for normal people and using their superhuman detectives to find out all of our dirty secrets. Which, of course, wasn't true at all. <laughs> it just, you know, a detective came in and really quickly realized all of your stuff because no one just had looked at you. And anyone who had looked at you probably would have found something very similar, you know? Yeah. Um, because the guy just was not being careful, you know? And, you know, that's that's what happened. Oh, but, um, you know, but uh, then Jaren has to deal with all of the all of the fallout of this and them trying to fight and keep all their clients and we find out that ironically Rand doesn't want to be associated with super superhero vigilante well uh you know the remnants of Rand that uh are, have assumed power in Danny's absence yeah. don't want to if there was just one more way to show what a self-centered jerk uh Danny Rand is yeah here you go here's one <laughs> The one silver lining to the ending of the Netflix Marvel Universe. Well, uh, I don't know about that. I, mean, I, would rather, I actually would have much rather if if he actually wasn't just the complete waste of human space. Right, obviously. Okay, maybe not a silver lining, but at least a, 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 a somewhat of a consolation prize. Did, did the sister live at the end of that? Was um... Yeah, I, I don't think uh, – well, okay. Well, oh, spoiler alert, but yeah. Oh, well, that's, that's an old show, yeah. 
but she's also she also wasn't in charge of Rand anymore. She had, she had that she had divested. Oh 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 right. Oh, I thought you meant uh, Barry. No no. Oh, you meant uh, right 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 right. Yeah, the, the Rand. Her name too. Yeah, the other sister. The the I've completely blanked out on who the other the the two siblings who were. Um, yeah. Iron Fist. Oh boy, why can't I? Yeah. I don't remember. Shame on us. I can't even remember the the the, the brother's name with the yeah, addiction was... and the kid on the way who ran off with Iron Fist to go find himself in Thailand. Now the father's name was Harold, right? Yeah, Harold, and I but I can't remember the last name. Yeah, Harold. And, uh, anyway, uh, it wasn't Rand. I know that, but Rand Industries and the board have decided that Jaron Hogarth, Joy, Joy was the girl and. I thought it was another J name for the boy too, but anyway. Anyway, but uh, yeah, Joy's Joy's divested. So basically, all of Jerry's contacts at Rand are gone. So um, that and that's that's dangerous for her. Also, for what it's worth, goes to that point where she wasn't being very invested in keeping this because otherwise she might have kept tabs on um, on uh, Iron Fist. Um, Although then again, one, right. could, one could also wonder and imagine that maybe you know, at some point in the future, when Iron Fist does need a lawyer, he's going to call Jerry again because what? What do you mean you're not my lawyer? <laughs> 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 so you know, there's always a turnaround. But she's dying of you know Lou Gehrig's disease. So mm-hmm. you know, how much time does she really have? And it is it, it, it's painful when uh, her former partner comes back. You know, now out and proud. Uh, you know. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It is what it is. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, they lose Rand, and that's two thirds of their business, as they say. Yeah. You know, and they can keep all these other clients, but but of course, that's what Lee. Well, that's what we're going to see her, her her way to to win back the public. But that's something for next episode. Hmm. Um, in the meantime, Maz, uh, anything else you'd like to talk about with this episode? I think my favorite piece of this whole episode is after they've finally saved Eric and Jessica comes in to see him and he says the goofiest little line to her and he says, you're like aspirin to me. And she says, oh, that's the worst line ever. But then she lays down and has like the only genuine, you know, self-satisfied, like she takes a moment, a brief vacation from all the madness of the world and allows herself to smile. And it's the most beautiful moment because it's the sweetest thing anyone could have said to her. And she plays it off in her, you know, hard exterior way. But then, you know, she sort of like to herself accepts his uh, a- a- adoration, too, which was uh, absolutely adorable. But you know that there actually is a, a, a aspect of that that goes a little deeper, which is that you're a really good person and you pretend you're not. But you are actually in the same way that people may seem good, but are actually horrible, horrible right. people. You're actually a really good person, and that is, that has the opposite effect on me. Like when I'm around someone who's really good, it actually relieves the pain. And yeah, as much as she beats herself up about it, she genuinely is good, and that is – what a comforting thought that must be. What a weight lifted off of her shoulders for everything that she feels guilty about. But you know, maybe that's what makes a good person is that you do feel guilty about the inadvertent things that you end up doing, you know? Well, exactly. I mean, that is the basis of being good is that you actually care. Yeah, actually that was give, beautiful. Give a thing. And yeah, it's it's awesome. It's wonderful. And that's reason 843 where we love this show. Okay. Indeed. So, Maz, if people would like to talk to you about how much you love this show and things that you like and, you know, other other philosophical and moral dilemmas that they may have. How can they find you? Or if they want to uh, send some questions our way for one of the writers of the show, Jamie King, who is soon to appear on this uh, podcast shortly, uh, they can email me at uh, mazmanzor at gmail.com or find me on Facebook under Maz Manzor. That's M-O-Z-Z-M-A-N-Z-O-O-R. And, of course, if you'd like to write to me in that old-fashioned email way, the way our Maz and Paz once said you can do so at superconnectivityblog at gmail.com that's superconnectivityblog all one word at gmail.com and of course follow me on twitter as I live tweet Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Cloak and Dagger other shows that I like to tweet about when I feel like it like The Good Place if that ever comes back uh, Orville's going to be on Hulu so I can't really live tweet that anymore but we'll see what we do at Charlie Esser that's C-H-A-R-L-I-E
yeah. E-S-S-E-R. Look for the two E's in the middle. For quality. Bing! There you go. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, that has been one more wonderful episode of the AKA Jones cast. Me and Maz were just so happy to be your friends. Good night.